Well, it's quick, it's easy, and it's free. In fact, you may wonder how we lived life in the days before the internet and before email. Phone calls could be expensive and time consuming, and sending letters through the post office could be painfully slow. But while email helps to make most of our lives easier, others find that it's taking our lives over. They're becoming obsessed, they say. Some say that now they're becoming edicted to email. Our AFR correspondent, Jam Sardar, talks to an expert about this and a victim, someone who is addicted to email. For most of us, email is a way to keep up, to communicate, to connect. For Joe Jamie Tyler, email is a way of life. She runs a website called Cafe Glam. Its focus, advice for women over 40, and her business partner lives in Canada. So she gets 50 to 60 emails a day, too many to answer between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., so she started answering them after hours. Slowly but surely, she stopped watching TV, stopped going out, stopped spending as much time with her family. But she didn't even notice until her husband sent her a message of his own. He just kept saying, you, you know, you're always on the computer, you're always on the computer. My kids started complaining. Um, so that's really, I think, when I started thinking to myself, you know, uh, I'm, I'm having a little bit of a problem. The volume of email wasn't her only problem. Jo Jamie felt compelled to constantly check for email because of the way it made her feel. Each little letter was like a drug. Opening them gave her a little high. I always feel like it's Christmas. It's like a little package, you know, you're so curious of what's inside of it. I almost think that's what it is. And I never thought of myself as having addictive personality, but I really think that's a problem. Can you be addicted to this? And the answer, according to psychiatrists, is yes. You can be addicted to just about anything. Marsha Egan knows just how serious the problem can be. Let's talk about the people who walk in the door and check their email before they say hello to their children. How about the people who get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and check their email? And then how about the people who name their dogs and children Mozilla, Firefox, and Google? The life coach noticed a few of her corporate clients complaining about how email was controlling their lives. She offered her clients an e-talk seminar to help them cope. The responses flooded her inbox. She's held 10 such seminars in the last six months, helping some 300 people deal with their e-diction. Her advice? Turn off the little ping that announces the arrival of every single email. Only check your inbox a few times a day. When you read your email, do one of three things. Respond, delete, or prioritize it somewhere other than your inbox. And close your email program or turn off your computer to reduce your temptation to check on it. They own their email. Email doesn't own them. And that's really hard for some people to grab. The advice is helping Joe Jamie. She's still got a backlog of some 400 emails to answer, but like any other addiction, she's coping with it one day at a time. I think anybody that's an addicted, you know, addicted to anything, it takes a little bit of an ongoing process, but it definitely helped me get through where I could at least deal with it so I'm not spending so much time on it. You know, we all deal with that on a daily basis. And then one of the other problems I find with email jam is that one email leads to another, then a response, then another, then a response. And you tend to go back and forth with all those responses that you may not, one, get the answer you were trying to get in the first place because it's lost in translation. Right. And two, you're spending probably more time than a quick little simple phone call could have done. Absolutely. That, that's true in a lot of cases. Another thing that our expert wanted to point out was that every time you open an email, you hear you're doing your work, you hear the little ping, you check your email, you read it, you send out another one. Each of those interruptions takes a good four or five minutes out of your day. Yeah. It's as the an interruption. Right. And you get you get 10, 12 emails in a day, that's an hour of your time that you haven't been productive. And that's a, that's a huge cost to businesses who have a culture of dealing with people through email. Curiosity killed the cat and it slows down the workplace because you just can't wait to see what that latest email is from. Now you've got something in your hand there that you what, what is that? It's a list of uh, you know you're an email addict when it's it's for humor uh, but it's also I'm sure right. kind of true uh, you email yourself if you haven't received an email from a few minutes just to make sure the system is still working um, when people ask you your name you give them your email address before anything else and uh, you email the person sitting in the desk next to you rather than just turn around and ask them the question Gosh. so it's a humorous way of looking at it and uh, but it's a serious problem for a lot of people as, as our victim said yeah uh, I, again it is a new way of life uh, this is the age of technology 
technology now, and we do, it does make matters more convenient more often than not. But I, I love the ideas that you put forth in your report, and that is prioritize it and get rid of it and don't wait for the next one to come through and slow yourself down. Absolutely. Email's a great thing. It's just a question of learning how to use it and managing it properly. Yeah, and don't carry a BlackBerry. That's the crack. They call it the Crackberry the, the crack, for a reason. Yeah, the yeah. Crackberry. <laughs> All right, Jim. Good stuff there, and um, stop emailing me so much. <laughs>